I'm not going to discuss too much uh, why we were using singletons, but this was uh, a bug we came across recently, uh, and I was mainly surprised at how long it took us to spot it uh, and figure out how to deal with it better. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it, this is uh, a fairly typical pattern for creating a singleton object since about C++, uh, C++ 11. Uh, refined the mechanics of static so that it was guaranteed if you had multiple threads all call in instance, then there was no danger of getting multiple instantiations uh, overlapping. Uh, they would block and wait for the first one to finish creating, in this case, our, our manager object. Any following calls to instance on any threads would all just return the reference. So this is sometimes referred to as the Scott Myers singleton after he popularized the pattern. All works great. Um, we can call instance wherever and whenever we like and then use whatever member functions there are on the object. The problem we had um, was that when the manager object was being constructed, um, it was actually calling into a C library to go and get a resource that it was populating its internal uh, um, member variable with, which we would then clean up during its destruction, which was all great, um, apart from the problem that we were getting was occasionally when we actually got the instance, got the resource, passed it into another C function, we would then get a crash. The fact that I've simplified it here to look like a pointer, you can probably guess what's going wrong. Problem is create resource doesn't always succeed. The Problem we had was, well, this is a singleton. The singleton got created once. Uh, whether or not the internal resource was constructed, it was checked for locally, so everyone thought everything's good. So we kept looking through the call stacks, because this was from uh, a client site, and kept just blanking out the singleton instance access because we knew the pattern was bound to be working. Um, once we had realized that the pointer was going wrong, it was, okay, where can we trap it and check for it, and how could we get it to have another go? Because most times, if the create resource was recalled a second time, it would work fine and we'd have no problems. But the static only gets tried once. How could we get the static to try more than once? Uh, so this was an example of a problem we had. If we did try calling it more than once, because the static has already been created, uh, uh, then on the second instance, we were still getting the same badly formed um, manager. It was never actually retrying the initialization. It also is unpleasant because the only way we can detect the problem is by going in and not checking the instance, but by checking the resources itself, which means we have to understand from the poorly documented interface what might go wrong. Uh, we looked at various possibilities, um, runtime checks on is it a valid singleton, and if not, then reinitialize it, so some sort of just-in-time thing or getting in there in the static construction and having some sort of a loop that would keep trying it until it succeeded, but then we couldn't really risk that getting out in the wild in case it never succeeded. We had some ideas. Could we somehow have nested static objects so that the outer one wouldn't run if the inner one hadn't completed successfully? None of them really worked. Uh, but they did all lead us towards the idea of realizing or thinking more carefully about static. Uh, and the fact that static only runs once, but crucially, it only completes construction once. As soon as we started thinking about that, we realized if we inter interrupt the construction by throwing an exception, if it had failed to create the resource, then we could have a new pattern uh, in our uh, instance uh, getter that put the static instantiation inside the try, which would never complete until we'd actually got a decent resource. That did force us to then wonder, well, what are we going to do in the catch? We can't return a reference anymore, so it forced us to change the interface to a pointer. Uh, but that actually had the nice side effect of giving us a much clearer interface of when users need to check their singleton before using it, but now we're getting the desired effect that if we want to, if the client wants to, and it's up to them, uh, then they can retry um, with the hope that we'll actually keep retrying until it succeeds. Once it has succeeded, they're not going to pay the penalty anymore. Um, takeaways from this, just because you've successfully constructed something doesn't mean it's actually usable if the internal state is not the way you were expecting it to be. 
Uh, it also prompt, reminded us to, oh, sorry, run out of time. Uh, check your assumptions. <laughs> Thank you.